There has been mountains and mountains of propaganda and FUD false information spread by companies such as Toyota saying that electric vehicles are not cleaner than internal combustion engine powered vehicles. The Union for Concerned Scientists had this to say about the matter. They've weighed in, they're sharing the facts, it's official now, we have the truth. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. Welcome back to all the current subscribers and welcome to all the new ones as well. We have done, I think, about 1,800 to 1,900 videos over the past 12 to 15 months. It's been crazy because so much has happened. So make sure you check out some of those videos on the channel. I think there's more there than any other channel that does similar stuff, right? However, lots of the videos that I've made have been trying to debunk claims from companies like Toyota and from other media who claim that, yes, electric cars are not cleaner than gas-powered cars, and in fact, they pollute. There's a lot of people that literally believe this stuff. They've been totally brainwashed because they're stupid and they're sheep. They get easily led. They're not interested in facts. They're emotionally connected to what they currently do. They don't like change, whatever it is. But the truth is that, yes, it is actually true that battery powered vehicles do cause some pollution. All technologies have environmental impacts. Even zero emission vehicles do create carbon emissions, both in their manufacture and in generating the electricity used to power them. Now, EvanX says it's reasonable to ask how much these emissions amount to and how they could be reduced. Unfortunately, however, intelligent debate on the issue is drowned out by the screams of the anti-EV crowd, the delusional muppets, the crazies, the, the far, the far whatever they are, lunatics there's lots of them and unfortunately they have social media and they use it all the time they it's like the blind leading the blind essentially and this produces a never-ending stream of stupidity articles and posts with titles like evs dirty little secret or are electric vehicles really clean they're everywhere it's ridiculous my advice is Ignore them. Don't pay attention. Don't argue. What does Mark Twain say about arguing with an idiot, right? You can't argue with idiots. It's pointless. You get nowhere. I really like what Evan X said, right? He said, as we've discussed at length in this space, these writings invariably indulge in all kinds of exaggeration, logical fallacies, and outright falsehoods in order to support the demonstrably incorrect idea that EVs pollute just as much, if not more, than gas vehicles, and the even more preposterous idea that science and the media have been ignoring the issue of EV emissions for the last two decades. Amid the flood of misinformation and intentional, intentional misinformation, intentional lies, but probably more than anything intentional clickbait to get you to look, to get you to pay attention, to get you to respond, to get you to react, to get you to argue, because People make money from this, right? They make money out of simply clickbaiting you into an argument. But amidst all of this, the Union of Concerned Scientists has been an authoritative and reliable source of accurate information. The organization has published a series of detailed studies of the long tailpipe issue, regularly updated with the latest data. The first UCS study was from 2012, and this confirmed that even when charging an EV with electricity made from coal back in 2012, the dirtiest electricity source, the EV has better emissions than the average new gasoline vehicle. So even 10 years ago, when we had half as much or less than half the renewable energy that we have available today, electric vehicles were still cleaner. They're much cleaner now, it's not even close. Follow-up UCS studies in 2015 and 2017 reached very similar conclusions, as have many different studies from many places, right? Many authoritative places. They don't want to clickbait you. They just want to tell you the truth, give you the real facts. Evan X says that in a new article, what are the benefits of switching from gasoline-powered cars and trucks to electric, the UCS brings the emissions issue up to date. Since the goal is to reduce emissions, a natural question is, what are the net benefits of switching from gasoline-powered cars and trucks to fully electric vehicles? Now, this was asked by David Reichmuth, who is a senior engineer in UCS's Clean Transportation Program. To answer that question, he said, 
I and my colleagues in the Clean Transportation Program have analysed the global warming emissions from all of the steps required to make and recharge EVs and compared that to the emissions from making and driving a comparable gasoline vehicle. So this includes everything, the entire chain, right? In the first section, Reichmuth lists the emissions factors involved in generating the electricity to power an EV. Raw material extraction, e.g. coal and natural gas, delivering fuels to power plants, burning fuels to generate electricity, electricity distribution losses, and the efficiency of the vehicle. It's important to remember efficiency of electric cars is usually around about triple the efficiency of an internal combustion engine vehicle. He lists the emissions factors involved in fueling an internal combustion engine vehicle, as so many of the anti-EV screeds do not. Oil extraction, transport of crude oil, refining, delivery of fuel to gas stations, and combustion of the fuel. Because of differences in electricity generation across the United States, the emissions produced from driving the average EV vary depending on where the vehicle is driven. But everywhere in the United States, driving an EV results in lower emissions than the average gasoline vehicle. This was true in 2012, when 45% of US electricity came from coal. Well, guess what? Only 22% of electricity comes from coal in the US now. A far greater percentage of US electricity comes from renewable energy. Plus, many, in fact, most people who drive an electric car in Western countries do it using their own solar energy that they generate from the sun. Another way of looking at the equation, how efficient would a gasoline vehicle need to be to have the same global warming emissions as an EV? More than 90% of US drivers live in regions where driving an EV is like getting 59 miles per gallon in a typical car. 59 miles per gallon. Based on where EVs have been sold in the US, driving on electricity produces emissions equal to those of a gasoline car getting 91 miles per gallon. As you can see, gas cars don't get anything remotely close to that. The average hybrid gets 51 miles per gallon. What does that mean? Well, the average electric car gets twice the efficiency of a hybrid vehicle. The UCS report brings up an important point that many car buyers overlook, as is the case with gas vehicles, efficiency matters. Obviously, right? Fudsters from oil and gas on Toyota and their other cronies intentionally don't mention efficiency. They don't intentionally don't mention that the efficiency of electric cars is far greater than gas vehicles. The more efficient the EV, the greater the benefits of switching from gasoline to electricity. For example, the emissions from driving a 2021 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus in California equal those of a gasoline car getting 152 miles per gallon. 152 miles per gallon. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's never been done before by a gasoline-powered car, and it will never be done. The Tesla's global warming emissions are a fifth of those of the average new gasoline car and over 60% less than even the most efficient gasoline car on the market, says UCS. Now, the efficiency question is becoming even more relevant as large SUVs and pickup trucks start to go electric. Larger vehicles, whether gasoline or electric powered, are less efficient, UCS points out. However, if you're aware in the US, the emissions from driving an EV pickup truck are lower than those for the average new gasoline or diesel pickup truck. Emissions from energy usage are only half the story though. And UCS doesn't gloss over the facts. Manufacturing an EV results in more global warming emissions than manufacturing a comparable gasoline vehicle. This is chiefly due to the energy and materials required to produce an EV's battery. Now, one thing you got to remember, right? Most modern batteries will last about a million kilometers now. That's a lot more than the average engine will last in an internal combustion powered vehicle. So what invariably happens is, right, people who are arguing that gasoline powered cars are better than battery powered vehicles will just stop the argument there. They'll say, no, 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 no. Because it makes, it costs more energy to build an electric car Therefore, the argument's finished. Stop, no, 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 let's not talk about this anymore. I don't want to know about any more facts. They'll stop it right there, right? However, the thing is, most of the emissions over the lifespan of today's vehicles occur during use. So the reductions from driving an EV more than offset the higher manufacturing emissions. I'm sure you already knew that, right? One way to look at this is to consider the break-even point. How far does a particular electric car need to drive 
for its lower usage emissions to cancel out. This break-even point varies depending on regional electricity emissions, writes Mr. Rakemuth. Based on where the US population lives, the break-even point for an electric car with a 300-mile range compared with the average new gasoline sedan is only 21,000 miles of driving, or 22 months based on average annual Driving. Break even occurs more quickly after about 17,500 miles, which is around about 17 months in the US on average, when comparing an electric truck with 300 mile range with the average gasoline pickup truck. And that's pretty important to consider because what's the most popular type of vehicle in the United States? The pickup truck, right? The latest UCS report bears out an important point that EV fans have long made. EVs get cleaner over time as the electric grid gets cleaner whereas ice vehicles do not if anything they get dirtier as they get older look at all the old cars driving around right with damaged particulate filters non-existent particular filters have been removed and just massive emissions coming out of their tailpipe they get worse and worse this is also not considering the reality that many people intentionally remove parts of their car to make them in their minds more powerful or louder or whatever it may be but this causes a lot more emissions if you compare this most recent UCS report to those from 2012 2015 and 2017 you'll see the green tint grow brighter and brighter however this report doesn't acknowledge the reality of the video I just made the other day right a Tesla Model 3 510,000 kilometers, nothing has been changed. Nothing, nothing has had to be changed. It still works perfectly. And the battery still has 80% of its original capacity. However, that's a lithium ternary battery. Imagine if it had a lithium iron phosphate battery. It'd last three times longer. That is where the game completely changes. When an internal combustion engine vehicle dies, what do you do with it? It goes on the scrap heap. It's pretty much worth nothing. When a battery vehicle dies, what do you do with it? I'll tell you what you do with it. You use those batteries in another car for energy storage, for your house, for your caravan. There's a multitude of different use cases for used batteries. They won't just be thrown out. Currently, just look on eBay. Many, many thousands of used batteries sell from Tesla vehicles that have been written off or when the vehicle has just gone beyond the lights usage case. Electric cars and trucks are much cleaner than their gasoline counterparts for a variety of reasons, but there's still room for improvement. UCS points out that drivers need to choose the most efficient EV that meets their needs and the industry needs to continue working to reduce the environmental footprint of raw material extraction and to develop a circular supply chain based on recycling materials from used batteries and this is where the game completely changes and the story becomes entirely different. To truly clean up our act, we need to make a speedy transition to renewable electricity alongside the transition to e-mobility. The world now is transitioning to renewable energy at the quickest pace ever in history. In addition to that, battery recycling companies have sprung up all over the globe. Most people estimate that by 2050, we'll have a closed loop where we'll only need to use the materials from recycled old batteries to build all the batteries that the world actually needs, meaning no more lithium, phosphate, nickel, aluminium, or cobalt will need to be mined in order to manufacture the batteries the world needs. And that is what the Fudsters, Toyota, oil and gas, and all those other people trying to convince you of lies, intentionally ignore a closed loop system where no mining will be necessary. When that happens, what does that mean? It will mean to manufacture an electric car will be much cheaper, more efficient, and less taxing on the earth than manufacturing an internal combustion engine vehicle. It's not long before we get there. Thank you for watching.